Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and part, parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to talk about the Cortland Town Supervisor in action. And the Cortland Town Supervisor is Linda Puglisi. She's with me. And it's just such a pleasure to have you here, Linda. Thank you, Sandy, for inviting me. It's always a pleasure. And we always have wonderful topics to talk about. Right. I'm looking forward to it. And actually, in my legislative district, Cortland is the biggest town. Oh, is that right? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And mm -hmm. besides the fact that you have the most people, you kind of wander. Cortland kind of wanders around <laughs> Peekskill and, and up into Putnam, right, right next to Putnam well, County. Well, the city of Peekskill, our good neighbor, uh, used to be a village in the town of Cortland. And then back in the early 1940s, I believe it was, it became an incorporated city. There are good neighbors, and we have a great mm -hmm. working relationship with them. And the town of Cortland uh, abuts the beautiful Hudson River. Um, we have many hamlets in our area, such as Montrose and Verplank and Kruger's. And uh, we have 40,000 terrific people and uh, 40 square miles. Right. So it's a pretty big and town. And you go up, because uh, when I'm on the Bear Mountain Bridge yeah. going to Albany, I realize Part of that bridge, well, is is in Putnam County, and then the Goat Trail that yep. wanders around. Yeah, um, when you come over the uh, Bear Mountain Bridge, um, now also called the Purple Heart Memorial mm -hmm. Bridge, um, as you know, I had the honor of being there for that dedication, and uh, then you meander down what we call affectionately the Goat Trail uh, to the Annsville Circle. And the town of Cortland begins right there when you come off that bridge. Right. Yep. So. And then it goes down to um, through the village of Buchanan, of course, and the village of Croton on Hudson, to the Croton Gorge uh, Park and uh, the Croton Dam. Mm -hmm. So it's really a beautiful town, uh, many parks, uh, lovely open spaces, and we're doing pretty well on our economics and more commercial in our community. Cortland Crossing Shopping Center just opened. Um, but we're looking for more economic growth, um, obviously, because Indian Point is closing soon. And mm -hmm. that's our largest tax revenue generator and our largest employer in the town of Cortland. I know right. you want to talk about Indian Point in a right. few moments. Well, let's, let's go back a little bit. Yeah. What are some of the things in the last... You, you've been supervisor now for 20, 27 years. I'm in my 28th years. year. 28th year. Yes, okay, it's an so honor. Let's, what are some of the different things that have happened? I know there's been preservation of land during mm -hmm. that period of time uh, for parks. What, what are some of the, the differences if somebody looked back 20 years ago? Well, how much time do we have? Well, <laughs> <I'm just laughs> you have to do it briefly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, really, we have such wonderful teams working together, town board members, department heads, employees, volunteers who give us ideas also. And as I say all the time, it's been such an honor to be town supervisor for these 28 years. The time has gone like that, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, but we have a Cortland train station in the town. Um, that was something that I lobbied for with Metro North. Right. If I remember correctly, there were two like small little yes. stations. Yes, they were outdated. Uh, they were not. Right. They were not handicapped accessible in the um, Montrose section of town and in the Kruger's area mm -hmm, of town. Mm -hmm. And so we lobbied to have a centralized train station, and Metro North agreed, and so mm -hmm. they built it. And uh, they had some land that they acquired, and we're, we abut it with our youth center and the New York State um, Police Headquarters mm -hmm. for Troop K mm -hmm. is right there too, right. off of Memorial Drive. You're familiar, right? So it's that's also very good for the veterans' home. Yes, the Montrose Veterans' yeah, Home for a lot people of to be able to. A lot of veterans can come right, can come off at the Cortland train station, walk right across the walking uh, designated path to go across Albany Post Road to get to the wonderful VA mm -hmm. hospital that you and I have worked on with mm -hmm. our chairman of our Veterans Committee, Willie Nazario, all of our veterans to make right. sure that veteran services remain there. Right. We I do, we, remember all the protests and rallies, yeah. So we're, I'm outside. proud of that. So right. we've done that collectively with our mm -hmm. veterans group as well. And then the Cortland Town Hall was mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. first uh, projects that I worked on as town supervisor. I was a councilwoman for four years prior to becoming Supervisor Sandy. And I always thought that um, it would be important to have our own identification and our own town hall. And, and when you started out, Cortland Town Hall was yeah. connected with Croton. 
right? I, Part of I'm, the building. I'm the last town supervisor that had an office space in the Village of Croton Village Hall mm -hmm. on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And it was lovely. You know, we mm -hmm. had uh, a lot of great meetings with our Croton officials, still do, by the way. And then uh, once we found this wonderful school that Lakeland School District no longer wanted and they were putting it up for sale, mm -hmm. it was their mm -hmm. one of their elementary schools, I thought it would be a great idea for Cortland to purchase it. Um, the board at the time, the supervisor at the time, we worked on that. And then we put it up for a referendum because we wanted mm -hmm. the people to speak. Something mm -hmm. of that magnitude, you want right. the public to speak. And it won overwhelmingly, mm -hmm. uh, three to one to purchase it. And there had been a, a fund set aside to have a town hall in the future, so we mm -hmm. used that money. Mm -hmm. that the was, reuse of an old school. It was a recycling was of great. a school, and you know we've kept the history of the mm -hmm. school. One of the wings dates back to the 1930s to a WPA project, by the mm -hmm. way. And uh, so it's really exciting. We're really, really proud of it. Uh, half of our town employees uh, are located at the town hall. It's six acres of campus. We have a little league field there that mm -hmm. we provide for the little league. And so it's, uh, and the girls so, uh, softball also, Sandy. So that was a project uh, that I worked on. And so I've been the first mm -hmm. supervisor in this town hall and the last one in the village hall. I know there will be many after me, <laughs> but uh, I'm really proud of that endeavor. Right. Right. And uh, open space has been important. The environmental issues has been really key to me. That was some the, something that I ran on initially. And so we have added about 3,000 acres for open space and parkland purposes mm -hmm. during my tenure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a lovely balance of parkland slash open space economic growth, mm -hmm, residential, mm -hmm. some commercial, some industry. Obviously, Indian Point has been the major industry mm -hmm, in our mm -hmm. community. It's located in the village of Buchanan, by the way. Right. And Buchanan, of course, has her own government, government with the mayor, Teresa Knickerbocker. And uh, we provide, the town provides some services. So we are partners with Teresa mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and her board on going through this journey now right. of Indian Point well, closing. Indi Indian Point, I know we, we have over the years have had so many meetings. Yes. Uh, you and we I started out with public meetings and, and for a while they really weren't working because everybody was yelling at everybody else, yeah. if you remember that. And I then, sure do. Uh, but we've had so many meetings with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, um, Entergy, or before that, Con Ed and the New York Power Authority. Mm -hmm. So been a lot going on. Um, now the status today is um, with Indian Point. We're yeah, Entergy is the current owner. They bought it from Con Edison back in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. All right, and so fast forward 19 years, almost two decades, they've owned the three nuclear plants. Indian Point One has been closed for decades. Mm -hmm. So the two operating ones are IP2 and IP3 and the radioactive spent fuel rods are also on this property, as you know. Right. So um, back in January 2017, there was an announcement made by the CEO of Entergy mm -hmm. and by mm -hmm. our governor uh, Cuomo of New York State. They made it on the, the announcement on the same day. And the announcement was that the nuclear plants would close officially in 2020 and 2021. So we knew it was going to close eventually. We just mm -hmm. didn't know it was going to close that soon. Mm -hmm. However, you have to go forward and you have to take action immediately. So I, along with the mayor of Buchanan and the Hendrick Hudson School District Superintendent Joe Hawkwriter, because they're going to be affected with right. loss of revenue right. as well. We formed a local task force. You're kind enough mm -hmm, to come mm -hmm. to all of our meetings and give us your input and what's going on at the state level for us to help us, Sandy. So thank you so much. 
And so we've met regularly. We have about 20 people. We have some of our local realtors on it. Uh, our Chamber of Commerce is mm -hmm. a, a member of it. Uh, reps from the town board, village board, school board, mm -hmm. and, uh, and other. Labor and so on. And then right. there's a, a community organization called Power Through Cortland. They, mm -hmm. they are represented on our local task force. And then um, your counterpart, the state senators, mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. to our meetings also. Uh, County Executive George Latimer has participated, and it's been like a research paper for me and for mm -hmm, us. You know, mm -hmm. We've had the NRC come to speak to us. Right. We've had Entergy come right. and speak. The Vermont people. And then the Vermont right. uh, citizens group from mm -hmm. uh, Vermont. There was a nuclear plant owned by Entergy up there, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm, called the mm -hmm. Yankee, Yankee plant. So we had the citizen group come down and tell us what they're going through, because that closed by Entergy prior to ours. So it's been a research paper, as I've said, and uh, we're concerned about the loss of almost 1,200 permanent jobs, and we want them to be retrained, reskilled, mm -hmm. and so on, and Entergy is working with them, and um, to the best of my knowledge, I think they are. And so we're concerned about good paying mm -hmm. jobs, a lot of union jobs, so we're concerned about that, and then the loss of revenue. And just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. quickly, as um, briefly as I can, the whole amount of money every year is $32 million in revenue. For all of the different, and all that goes out to different com parties. You start with and the county the, and the county uh, uh, library. Is, is 1% of their budget mm -hmm. that they're going to be losing. The town of Cortland, 2%, and that equates to 800000 a year. Mm -hmm on a $42 million budget. We're, I'm not going to say we're going to be fine because who mm -hmm. wants to lose $800,000 in your budget, but we're, going to, we're doing our best to address it immediately by putting $100,000 a year aside each mm -hmm. year. So when we get there, we'll have some money in the bank to offset it. And we're looking for economic development, and I can talk about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. in a few minutes. And then uh, Hendricutson School District, which is in the jurisdiction of Indian Point, will lose $24 million a year. That is right. one-third of their annual yeah, revenue. And if we can all think about our school district, you know, whatever school district you're in, yeah. losing a third, third of their revenues, right. um, it, right. it's a really, it's, it's, so really they tough are, issue. They're looking at plans, and of course we're looking to the federal government, the state government, to help to offset to some degree. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there are budget restraints at all levels. And then our friends in the village of Buchanan, um, they're looking, I think it's 45% uh, of their annual mm -hmm. um, budget comes from Indian Point. As I said before, that's where Indian Point is physically located mm -hmm. within the boundaries mm -hmm. of the village. And that equates, I think, to about $3.5 million a year for the mayor, the trustees, and for the wonderful people in the village of Buchanan. So we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. It's our biggest challenge, and as I said, our, it, it has been our largest um, source of tax revenue and employer. Mm -hmm. So these are big challenges. That's always hard for any community yeah. um, if you lose one industry, but, but Indian Point was like a huge industry. It's huge. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, just, you know, losing yeah. medical office building or something like that. I remember years ago, like General Motors left in... Um, mm -hmm. And that was big. That was that big. Was big. Yeah. yeah. Right. I've talked to the former mayor there, Phil Zagarelli, really? who's a friend right. of ours, and how he got through that journey, you know, and uh, they, they still are, right? Right. So for a huge corporation to leave a community is big, no matter mm -hmm. what it is, an IBM and a GM. Mm -hmm. But uh, these nuclear plants are big. A little different, too, because the nuclear and plant ends up with the spent fuel rods that are still there. Yeah, and, so and that's, that's a problem. That's an issue as you, as you think about, I mean, General Motors has had to clean up and, and they had uh, paint um, because of the paint plant that um, really um, put toxic, toxicity to into, the, the, re into re the soil. Yeah. But um, the problem with the spent fuel rods is that there's no place for there's them, no place there, they're for they're them to going, go. They're not going to right. up the mountain in my lifetime, right. you know, uh, because no, nobody wants the radioactive spent fuel rods to traverse their state. So the transportation of them to Nevada or wherever is problematic. So we are facing having them 
situated here into perpetuity. We don't know how long that would be. Um, and we are making sure that they're enclosed mm -hmm. uh, properly. I know you're involved mm -hmm. in that and the uh, layers of steel and cement and so on. And they are and they will be. But uh, to have them here, that's, you know, we, right. we want to make sure that also that they can be assessed and taxed so mm -hmm. we can get re revenue from them in mm -hmm. the future. Right now, they're not. Right. So the NRC doesn't allow them to be assessed and taxed currently. Right. But the other problem with the uh, situation, Sandy, is that it sits on a campus of 240 acres. Right. That is a big piece of land. Right. It abuts the Hudson River, right. as you know. It's a great piece of land. So yes, the question is. is how it can be used and at what time right. frame can it be reused? Yes, um, that's and the question. The state was good enough to retain a consultant to do just that, to evaluate, mm -hmm. to see what can be built there. Are there some corners of the property that could be carved mm -hmm. out, subdivided for um, um, uses for economic growth now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or in the next couple of years? And Entergy comes in and says to our task force, no, that's not going to happen, not in the very near future. So we're looking elsewhere for economic growth in the town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with an outside economic consultant that we retained about a year ago. The town paid for it, $85,000, uh, to look at properties in the town. Our planning department, uh, Chris Keel, Michael Prezioso, our town engineer, they're looking at parcels that can be that are unused right now, they're vacant. You just did a, basically a report from that economic development group, yes. right? Yes. As, as to like places, corridors in the area that That's right. might be able to be expanded. So anyway, with the state's consultant, they did say in their, uh, DL English was the consultant if you recall, they did say in their expert opinion that corners of the property mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. reused mm -hmm. for economic mm -hmm. growth, that it wouldn't be impacted in right. their opinion by the dismantling of the plants and so on. But Entergy right now, they may change their mind in the future, says mm -hmm. no. So we have right. to take in action mm -hmm. is the title mm -hmm. of the show. <laughs> and so uh, we have, right, to, take have to take action. take action for their inaction. So right the away we go into action and we have our planners and engineers looking at properties that are vacant, first of all, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then maybe some properties that could be reused mm -hmm. if the private mm -hmm. owners would allow that to occur. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what I thought was very interesting, um, Verplank, yeah. not everybody's been to Verplank. It's not like a place that you would it's, go it's through. It's a hamlet. Yeah. It's a hamlet, and, but, but it's, you know, surrounded by water, yeah. uh, and it is beautiful. And I know you're kind of looking at that for some opportunities, basically Absolutely. recreational well, opportunities. Well, we bought one uh, a few years ago. We bought 100 acres from Con Edison, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, and... Um, it abuts the Hudson River again, and so it currently has a field on it, which we're going to keep, and we're looking at other opportunities on that property, and economic growth is one of our major considerations for that property. So there's things that are um, plans that we have with private developers for that property mm -hmm. for jobs and for revenue, and it's in the Hunter Hudson School District so it would benefit them. Mm -hmm. Also, we have bought a lot of other land in the hamlet of Verplank on the river. We have a Cortland Waterfront Park, and there were some mobile homes that were there for many years, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. were allowed to stay there for 10 years after the owner passed away and the land was deeded to the town mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. point, right? And so that's all done. And now we're looking at perhaps a restaurant and some commercial use of that property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's all kinds of ideas, and we don't have any railroad tracks that go through that property. Mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. very conducive for maybe a hotel, maybe restaurant, some commercial shops. Mm -hmm. That Verplank is a beautiful area right. of our community. Right. So we're really looking is. there, and then around the Cortland train station, we're also looking for which is Montrose, the area of Montrose. Uh, it's in the Kruger's, Kruger's area okay. of of the Hamlet area okay. of the community. And as I said, that was something that was one of my projects early on. So we have a lovely Cortland train station. A lower level and an upper level was added. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, some property that we own there that could be conducive for some economic growth, maybe a mixed use of mm -hmm. some apartments or townhouses. So people coming up from the city 
could perhaps live there and they have little shops and so this mm -hmm, is kind mm -hmm. of a planning that has emanated from our current master plan mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we uh, received awards on. Right. So you have a lot of things to think about. There's a lot of things yes. going on in our lovely right. community, right? I know we have some information about the town of Cortland financial record and one of the things that I've always felt with Cortland and you leading it is you have just you were you were there before the tax cap was really there. We call um, ourselves the original tax cap. The cappers. original tax cap. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> thought about it. But your financial record, I mean, it's incredible and probably an envy of most communities that you've been able Thank to you. keep the taxing level down. It's an in interesting story. When I first was elected and got sworn in 1992, I can't believe it's been that long, really. But I went to a forum and it was being put on by Dr. Sal Preziosi. Oh, yes, right. You right. remember him. He right. was the guru for sharing right. services. Mm -hmm. and. He had uh, chaired a report for the county, and so it was my first entree into considering, well, let's, why not? Let's mm -hmm, share mm -hmm. services. When we have a mandate, right, why don't we do it collectively with our mm -hmm. neighboring communities? Mm -hmm. So um, I still have the copy of that report. It was called the Westchester 2000. Right, I have that copy too. There really? was a lot I, of good work in there, but absolutely. a lot of people did not pay attention to it, but At you did. At the time, but right. I did, yeah. and uh, I really adored him. He was you know, really a terrific person. And so right away, I went to my colleagues and I said, why don't we start doing some of these things? Mm -hmm. So when we had some mandates, like um, filtration of water, mm -hmm from the EPA and the federal level of government. And so instead of Cortland building a filtration plant, Yorktown, Somers, mm -hmm. we did it collectively mm -hmm. and we established a joint waterworks. Mm -hmm. And you see the result of that on Route 6 now and then at the Amawalk Dam in um, the Somers, Yorktown area and then the Catskill Reservoir. So we filter the water together I have the honor of being on the executive committee and we meet monthly, all of us, and the Montrose Improvement District is part thereof as well. And so that was a shared service and that saved Cortland, believe it mm -hmm. or not, eight million dollars by oh doing goodness. it wow. jointly wow. together. Right. Right. So there's an example. Well, you and also took, you, you, the police. you looked at the police, yeah. right? The issue. police was um, a big one also. We had a very small town police department that was only established in 1980 by prior administrations. And by the time I became supervisor, it was nine officers and a chief and a couple mm -hmm. of dispatchers, right? So it was a small force. And it was augmented, uh, supplemented by the New York State Police that has always, for 50 years, I believe, had a strong presence in the town of Cortland. They've had an mm -hmm. office, a headquarters, if you will, in the town of Cortland. It used to be up by Ansville. Mm -hmm. And so they've been always there. And then we had some of our officers were going out on what's called 207C, Disability Workers' Comp. So you really didn't have So nine. we really didn't have yeah. enough officers for the shifts. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to the then county executive, um, Andy Spano, and he was in agreement and supported our idea. It was, we were the first community in Westchester to do something like this. To um, We dissolved our small police department because we didn't have a lot of uh, And you police. did that with public referendum, if I remember, didn't you, uh, the Well, police? what we did for the referendum uh -huh. was to ask people to support us building a new permanent state police barracks oh, okay. headquarters okay. down right. by the Cortland train station, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. won overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. So we knew they were going to be a strong presence mm -hmm. here permanently forever. And then, as I said, uh, some of our officers uh, weren't working. They were going out on disability. And so we asked the county executive we c if we could have a northern Westchester satellite of the county police department. Mm -hmm. He agreed. We all, Our boards voted on it. And so the referendum was on the police um, barracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I personally um, worked as hard as I can to find those um, police officers, other positions. Some of them were absorbed into the county police mm -hmm. department, by the way. A couple of them went into um, private security positions, and then others went out on this disability. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So, and we have that plan today. Right. And, and over time, you've over had to time. save a oh lot of money. Oh, my gosh, right. right. At that time, it was 1999 that we went into this new police plan for economic reasons. Uh, we were spending a million dollars um, a year mm -hmm. on just our small local police department, just about. And now, today, fast forward 20 years later, we are still only paying about 900000 a million dollars a year to the mm -hmm. county police department. So if that had, it would have escalated and right. grown, and we probably would have been at six, seven, eight million dollars a year, if not more. So we have saved all that money by sharing services with the mm -hmm. county police, mm -hmm. making sure that the state police stay here, and they have this new uh, headquarters. So. Uh, it's really been terrific. I have a great rapport with both departments and, you know, when I need them and citizens mm -hmm. call my office uh, that they need some additional patrols or whatever, they do their best to uh, comply. Mm -hmm. So it's really So great. interesting because so many communities, um, I mean, other communities uh, under pressure of not having enough revenue are really going to have to think about doing this. And yet it is yeah. so, so hard for them to do that. And you also did that with your having, not having an elected highway superintendent. So you were able well, we to. We changed that. Right. We so you used were, to have a elected right, highway but, superintendent. Right. And a lot of communities still have that. And that was a referendum. That, and that was a referendum. We put that up uh, to make it an appointed position for the same reason, economics mm -hmm. and cohesiveness of government, all right? So uh, it would all come under the umbrella of the supervisor and town board. We had a wonderful, very interesting highway superintendent. You may have remember him, mm -hmm, Skeet mm -hmm. Kelly, you know? And so, uh, uh, and then offered him if he wanted to be the appointed mm -hmm, and he decided mm -hmm. to retire instead. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that was a referendum and that won overwhelmingly and once we explained why we were doing that mm -hmm. for economic and in, purposes. And explaining it because um, today with your financial reports, you because of the things that you did, you were able to keep the taxes low. Yeah, so these shared services, thinking, having some vision to think ahead, and keeping all governments mm -hmm. are not for profits, obviously. So you try to take as much money in your surplus and put it on over to the next year to keep town taxes low. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing that. And then with grants, with your help mm -hmm. and uh, with state senators' help throughout the years, we've been able to get state grants, which have been very helpful. Federal grants help to augment our big projects, you know, also be it road projects or water projects, water storage tanks, things like that, right? Uh, block grants come to mind. And so that has been a factor also. And then from day one, I said, uh, I want to look at every single purchase over $100. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I see them. Mm -hmm. And then just like in your own household, if you don't need to buy that new refrigerator that year, mm -hmm. it might be it. nice. You right. want the, you know, the, the Viking refrigerator or whatever it's called, <laughs> right? You know, you make do, or if you need a new car, you might put it off for another year. I'm just using that right. as, an, as right. an analogy. So I look at everything, and our department heads are really terrific. You know, they, they don't uh, go crazy, and they don't say, we, we want this or we want mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. you know. So within reason, uh, I typically sign off what they need. and. Mm -hmm. um, vehicles also, and uh, trucks and vehicles, right. heavy equipment is really important. We're doing some leasing of those now. That's a new tool. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. lease them at the end of the lease, then we own them. So that's something new that I've worked on mm -hmm. with our town control. So it's constant. You're constantly it's constant monitoring looking, the budget. monitoring and looking at ways to save money for our taxpayers. And the result mm -hmm. of that has been 28 years of supervisor during this period, on average, Mm -hmm. uh, it has been only about a 1% tax increase for that duration. Mm -hmm. A couple of years have been a reduction because mm -hmm. when we did the mm -hmm. police plan, some and a lot of them have been a zero increase. I don't think I've ever gone over 2%, 2.5%. So on average, 1% for those many years. Indian point closure with the loss of revenue is a challenge. Right, so right. So we're going to try really hard to think of new ways to keep our expenses down and our town taxes low. We don't have any input into the school taxes because they have an elected mm -hmm. school board. Right. Right. And the same with the county has an elected. Right. So we just take care of our, 
our town. I our think this town. is a good place to end. You've oh. done such a great job and really a model for our communities. And I hope people will really think as we go forward, I mean, we'll probably have another tax cap. The public wants a tax cap. You know, they want us to figure out ways mm -hmm. to save money. And mm -hmm. so hopefully other communities will get your expertise it's and very kind make a of difference. You, Sandy, and you are, you know, a role model for all of us of the work you do in the state assembly. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're, <laughs> we're going to end. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you.